Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Maya Karen. For those of you who don't know, I do run a fashion blog called Classically Kept. It does feature contemporary and luxury fashion, and it also includes style advice. If you are into that, go ahead and subscribe to this channel because I upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday and hit the, not the notification bell, and you will be notified every single time I upload a video. So of course, before we get into the video, as you can see or as you can hear, my audio is much better. Y'all have been telling me about it and I was able to fix it. The right microphone came in. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into today's video. So today's video is just a little bit more fun. I'm going to be telling you guys or sharing with you guys 10 things on my luxury wish list. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first item on my luxury wish list for 2020, and it's probably in the closet or on the wish list of all fashion girls, it is the classic flap Chanel. I personally want it in caviar with gold hardware. And the reason why I say that is because it's more durable. So I do currently have this one. So this is the Chanel and it is the lambskin with gold hardware and it is the square mini. And I do carry this all the time. Very handy for like cookouts, festivals and things like that. But it is also very What's what I'm looking for? It's also very delicate. And I am a klutzy person. I have scratched this bag multiple times inside and outside. So if I'm going to be carrying another one, I want to make sure that it is going to be durable. I do want the medium size and that is two sizes up from this one. I do know that when I bought this, it did retail for about 2,900. And I believe last week Chanel did just do a price increase. So that may have to be a birthday present. I don't know. And actually, I am not opposed to buying it secondhand either or pre-loved. The reason why I say that is when you're talking about the classic flap, there have been several conversations about whether or not the quality has actually gone down. So the conversation right now is the quality has actually gone down, but the price has actually gone up. Because I want the medium, that one does retail right now for around 5,000. And like I just said, last week they did have a price increase. Um, but the reason why I say pre-loved is because the ones that were made, I want to say prior to 1995, the quality was actually a lot better because even the one that I have, and let me see if I can show you, you probably can't see it, but on the strap right here, it's actually starting to come apart. And I do know that people who have bought this bag prior to, I wanna say even 2000, that they don't have any issues. But that's also another reason why I do want the caviar leather. It's much, much more durable. Number two on my luxury wrist list for 2020 is the Balenciaga Hourglass Coat. Um, I do know that when it first came out, it was on the net support site and I absolutely fell in love. And it's called the Hourglass Coat because it has very structured shoulders and it is probably right below your kneecap, but it cinches in the waist. And who doesn't want a cinched in waist, right? But it gives just such a beautiful, a beautiful neckline of course, but it also gives a beautiful cinched waist for a coat. And that's probably the reason why I love it so much, but it came in black, it came in navy, it also came in a very pretty green color. And also right now I do know they do have a yellow plaid and they also have a blue plaid. Um, for something like that, that's more of a trend. So when we're talking about a Balenciaga coat, because the coat is $3,000, so I'm not going to be buying a yellow coat. That's not classic. I like to say, you know, spend on classics, <laughs> spend on classic and save on trendy. To me, a blue or a yellow coat is very trendy. Even though the body style or the type of coat is trendy itself, if you get it in a neutral color, it will be more of a classic. So the plan, if everything goes according to plan, even with coronavirus and travel restrictions, all that going on, there is a Balenciaga outlet in California that I want to go to this year for my birthday. Hopefully the coat in a neutral color will still be there, but that's number two. On my wish list for 2020 is the Lady Dior. This bag is so classic, and I will show a picture right here. I, I feel as though that this really does encompass my style. It's very structured, it's very classic, very simple. Um, I would actually like it in tan or black, and I want the small. I don't want the large, I don't want the medium, I don't want the nano. You can't fit anything in the nano. So I know that right now those start at about 3,400. Like I said before with the Chanel, I am not opposed to 
looking on the pre-loved market i do know depending on where you go it can either be more or less it also depends on what condition the bag is in and i kind of feel like the three things that i have named so far are very structured um and my mother says it's because that it actually reveals my personality or my clothes show my personality which basically she said that i'm uptight but i feel like i'm working on that but you guys let me know in the comments do your clothes or do your accessories kind of speak to your personality but that's number four number three number four is the Colt, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, it's the Colt Gaia EOS bag. It's called the box bag, and let me show you because I already have one in gray, which is my favorite color. Again, so structured, but this is the bag. To me, this is absolutely gorgeous. My mother says that this is actually a jewelry box. It's a purse. Open it like this, you can put your stuff in it. But this bag is absolutely beautiful to me. So I do know that currently right now on their website, they do have a gorgeous pink one. It's more of like a salmon color. It does retail for about 350. So I'm thinking I might or I might not, might wait for it to go on sale, but if it goes on sale, it's gonna sell out. So I might as well just go ahead and get it. This gray one was actually uh, gifted to me from my fiance for my birthday last year. And I don't really have any colored bags, so I'm thinking that that would be a great addition. Typically my bags come in, again, neutral colors. You have burgundy, you have brown, you have white, and you have black. So I think that would be a good addition. Number five on my wish list is actually a designer for clothing. It's an Australian designer, it's Zimmerman. I first fell in love with this brand when I saw how they had very intricate details and they started working with 3D. For example, the butterfly dress. I'll put it right here, but it, to me, it's absolutely beautiful. They also made it in a blouse. Now, as far as price point goes, these dresses for their more intricate ones, they do run about the price of a purse. Their more intricate detailed dresses probably start anywhere from $1,100 to $1,200. So if you are going to buy one when it comes to that price point for a dress, I just wanna make sure that it's the right one. That's something to me that I actually want to try on in a store. I don't want to order it and then have to wait for it to get to me, then I try it on, then I don't like it, then I send it back and then I get my money back. That's something that I actually want to try on in the store. So probably somewhere like Miami or Texas or somewhere in New York when I'm there, I'm probably gonna have to go shopping for that. Okay, so the next thing on my wish list is also a piece of clothing. It comes from the designer Cecile Bonson. Now, if you want to talk about volume, puff sleeves, some of the girliest but very ladylike dresses, this designer is it. Again, I'll put some pictures up here, but you're talking about puff sleeves, exactly what I have on, puff sleeves, very voluminous skirts, very voluminous blouses, and it's the exact same thing with the Zimmerman. Her dresses are gonna run you about a purse. And I know that her more intricate, again, depending on how puffy it is and how many tiers you have, they start probably around $800 and end up anywhere from about $3,400. So again, that is something that I want to physically go into a store and try on. They don't carry that here. We do have a Saks um, and a Nordstrom's at South, at South Park Mall, I am in Charlotte. Um, but they do not carry that brand. I've already checked, I've already called, I asked them if they were gonna get it, they said they were not. So probably again, New York, Texas, Miami, or it could be really anywhere else that I do travel. Maybe it will be at that um, outlet that I wanna go to on my birthday. But that is the next thing that I, on my wish list. It can, the dress can be black or white. I feel like if it's black or white, it will stay classic. Because if I do it in like a bright pink or some like off green color, it's gonna be a trendy piece and my money will not be well spent. Next is the sister shoe to the shoe that I got on my 2019 list. It is the Minolo Blahnik or the Carrie Bradshaw shoe as people prefer to it, is this. This gorgeous right here. This gorgeousness right here. It is called the Hengisi, but I know a lot of people refer to it as the Carrie Bradshaw shoe. But the shoe on my wish list, as I would call it, is the sister shoe. It is the Manolo Blahnik Lurum shoe, and I will show you. I will take it in blue, I'll take it in green, I'll take it in pink, I'll take it in any color. Now, again, these shoes do run for about the price of a luxury purse. They do start at 1200. I do want the four inch heel, of course, because I wear four and five inches, really. But I just feel like that shoe is so classic, and you know, Times are changing, fashion is changing. The shoe that I just showed you, 
You could wear that in the middle of the day and no one will question you. But that is the next thing on my list. A very classic piece. It is the Burberry trench coat. Now, as of today, they have hundreds upon hundreds, excuse me, of trench coats. So on their website, they actually have a quiz to guide you to let you know which trench coat would best suit you. So I took the quiz for the long and for the mid length and for both of them, it was the Chelsea Heritage trench coat. Now, both are 1900, so that's not too bad, especially for the quality of the trench coat that you are getting. And like I always say, I always bring it back to quality, I always bring it back to classic, and I always bring it back to trendy. I think it was a couple of years ago, um, Burberry came out with this very beautiful pink lace trench coat. While it was beautiful, that was very trendy. So when I buy my coat, it's going to be in the camel color. It's not even going to be in black because when I think of a trench coat, I think of the classic double-breasted belted right at the waist and it can either come, like I said, minked or it can come right below the knee and it's in a camel color. That is classic to me. And I will say that the price point is actually not that bad because the wear that you're going to get out of it, it will pay for itself. So, a million times over. But number nine on my wish list is from a designer called Self Portrait. They were, or they became famous because of their Azalea dress. I'll show it right here. Now, while I did see that dress and I did find it very beautiful, I didn't buy it because everybody was buying it. All the block, everybody. It, it was just, it, it was everywhere. It was even to the point where Forever 21, H&M, and more of your street brands were actually knocking it off and selling it. I don't really like wearing things that other people have, or I don't like wearing things that are worn by the masses. But when I saw the dress, I, I did fall in love. And when I was making this list, I was on their website and they're actually having a spring sale. So this one might actually come to fruition sooner than I thought it would. But I love them because of the fit and again, because of the detail. Beautiful detail. And I feel like their dresses encompass my style, my aesthetic, very ladylike again, I guess, very structured. Um, the coloring again is beautiful. I know right now they do have a lot of pastels on their website and it's just, it's, it's really pretty, very detailed and not everybody is going to wear it. So that's why I also like it. The 10th and final thing on my wish list for 2020 is just a classic pair of nude sandals. Now, when I refer to nude, I'm talking about my nude. I'm not talking about beige. So in 2013, Christian Louboutin, he did release five shades of nude or what people considered nude. And then in 2017, he added two more shades. And then in 2018, I was lucky enough to get a pump. So it is this shoe right here. It is known as the Aritzia. Gorgeous, I wear them all the time because to date, this is the only shoe that I had that actually matches my skin complexion. And I just want for the summer, for spring and summer, and for here and on, because I've had those now for three years and they've lasted me very well. Does At this point, it doesn't even have to be a luxury shoe. I just want a classic nude sandal, again, in my nude. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be luxury, it, it truly doesn't. I just want it to match. I believe I am the second shade from the darkest. And when he did come out with those two extra shades, they sold out very quickly, so, or that they said they were not going to be making any more or they were discontinued. So keep in mind, this was in 2018. I was in Texas, I was on an assignment, and something catches the side of my eye, and I look and I was like, is that the Christian Louboutin nude collection? And the guy or the sales associate said, yes. I said, okay, well, I need a size six. So he went back and he had it. And then when we get to the register, I found out <laughs> that they were on sale. So of course, they followed me home. But that is my luxury wish list, you guys. I will let you know. Of course, I will give you updates if I do actually buy anything. But just to let you know, of course, again, I do upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday. Bye for now.